Praise God. Greetings in the name of Jesus. What a joy to come your way again. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for another time in your presence to dig deep into your word. We pray that you will give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Pray that utterance will come to bless your people and that an impartation will go forth to take us beyond the world into the spirit and the reality of what we are dealing with and talking about today in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is you're watching us from. I'm so happy to come your way again. This is uh, our broadcast that will flag a sound from heaven because we trust God and believe God. It is our belief that unique sound will be coming from this platform to bless uh, God's people to go around the world and bless God's people. And I pray that as you begin to listen, that there will be a transformation, that God will do a work in your life and that your life will never remain the same. In the name of Jesus, your life will never remain the same. As you hear these words, there will be a manifestation of God's power in your direction and in your life to achieve that which God has called you to do in the name of Jesus. Amen. So what we're going to look up to today, it's, it's moving from um, prophecies or promises to manifestation. It's prophecies or what you call promises, promises that God has spoken to you, prophecies you've received, how do you move from that to the manifestation, to the actualization of those things? The Bible says, Blessed the she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things that were spoken by the mouth of the Lord. So, there is a blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things that were spoken of her by the Lord. So, there are things spoken concerning you and her by the Lord. But it is not enough for those things to be spoken. We appreciate that those things are spoken, but we need a performance. What is the essence of what is spoken and there is no performance. So we need a performance. So blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be, there shall be a performance of those things which were spoken concerning her from the Lord. So, if it is spoken of you by the Lord, there will be a performance. Now, God is faithful to do his part, but you and I have things to do. And that's what we're going to be showing you. No, no. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, from verse 18, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, Paul speaking to Timothy said something. He said, This charge I commit unto you, my son Timothy. He said, according to the prophecies that has gone ahead of you, that you will war a good warfare. The NIV put it this way. He said, son, Timothy, Timothy, my son, I'm giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, that, that so that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well by recalling them. So that means, we're going to, to be looking at that, but that means that if things are spoken concerning you, you must put it before your face. Now, it may not be literally, but it must be burning in your heart. It must be burning in your, I mean, both conscious and your subconscious mind. These things must be burning. It must be burning. For if it is not burning, you can let it sleep and you can forget It must be born. He said you recall them. In other words, you rehearse them. You say you go to God in prayers. Saying that this is what you said. This is what you said. You said this. You said that. You said this. So, so, and did You give me this promise. You give this prophecy. came. But there is no manifestation. For there are, uh, um, I would say, two kinds of manifestation in terms of prophetic words. Now, when prophecy comes... That's utterance in a known language. When those things come, those, those, those inspired words come, and a future that we desire is described, or a future that God intends for us is described. Now, there is some that has nothing to do with you. 
So in other words, with or without you, uh, those prophecies will still come to pass. But there are some, and largely so, that it, it depends on what we do. So for example, a virgin shall give birth. You pray, you do not pray. A virgin will give birth. It may not be you, it may not be her, but a virgin will give birth. Because the prophecy says a virgin, you can't do nothing against such. But there are also other prophetic words, like what God said to Abraham, that out of you, Isaac will come. And I will give you a son from your lungs, not Eliezer, a son from your lungs will come out. But that prophetic word necessitated that he would do something with his wife. So there are some prophetic words that comes that you must act. And there are prophetic words that come that it depends on your obedience. That it is when your obedience is completed, is fulfilled, then God is committed to bringing it to pass. I was pastor here at the way that was talking about... Uh, the hand of God on the redeemed Christian Church of God worldwide that we all see. And he was sharing it, I mean, writes it and shares it all the time in one of his books and one of the meetings, saying the same thing. And he said that the original, the founder, Pa Kindayomi, that God told him to do certain things. That if he does those things, that redeem will spread around the world. And that they were in Kennedy's meeting. Now, in that meeting, after Baba had completed his own part, fulfilled his own part, that Kennedy turned around and prophesied and said, Because you have done what I told you to do, then I will, I will now also begin to manifest and do what I promised to do. So, what you see today in that ministry is not um, somebody that is wise doing something. It is because God gave an instruction, a prophetic word to a man. The man was faithful, faithful enough to fulfill it. And now we see the manifestation because God is also faithful to keep his path. For faithful is he that has promised. Don't forget the scripture that I said earlier. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance. He said there shall, there shall be, there shall be. There shall be a performance of those things. There shall be a performance of those things that were spoken. They were spoken. Luke chapter 1 verse 45. Blessed is she that believeth. Blessed is she that believeth. For there shall be a performance of those things that were told out of the Lord. There will be a performance. And blessed is she that believeth. For there shall be a performance of those things which are told out from the Lord. So God is faithful. He will do his part. Now we see a scenario in the book of Joshua chapter 14, which is what we are going to be really looking at. Joshua chapter 14, and now this is the story of Caleb. And, and Joshua, Caleb, you know, blaming claim on, on his inheritance in the promise of God and, and, and getting into the manifestation of what God had promised. And that's the essence of this video. So from verse 6, Joshua 14, from verse 6. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephthah, the king of Zion, said unto him, said unto Joshua, Thou you know the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me, and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Now, the background, you see the background is Numbers 13 and 14. Uh, Twelve of them, they were spies to spy out the land, the Canaan land, the promised land. And then came back with evil reports. And then two came back with a good report. So Caleb and Joshua was those, they were those who came back with a good result. And because of that, God was so triggered and said that he will ensure that they do not die in the wilderness because others were going to die because of their promises. They, they, they acted in unbelief. If you are going to see the manifestation of God's power, if you're going to see the manifestation of what God has spoken to you, you've got to act in faith. You've got to believe. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance. Luke 145. Luke 145. Blessed is he, is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things. 
that was spoken. But she got to believe first. He got to, he said, if without faith it's impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and the reward of them that diligently seek him. So you got to believe. You got to believe. So they believe God, and because God saw their faith, you know, because God honors faith, is 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 like you uh, promising someone something, and then they doubt your person. You know, that's that's very that's that's um, you wouldn't like somebody doing that to you. So when God sees an individual that believes him. That, that trust him. You know, before you can believe somebody, you've got to trust them first. So Caleb is saying to Joshua, now you remember what happened. You remember what happened. You know, I was 40 years old. You remember what happened. 45 years ago, you remember. You remember what happened. That the promises were said unto you and her. And 40 years old was high when verse 7, when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in my heart. In other words, the report that I brought was what was in my heart. You see, you've got to be careful and pay attention to what goes on in your heart. Most time, I was reading the scripture the other day where Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, where Paul talks about uh, um, uh, uh, um, where Paul talks about God putting the desire and the care of those churches in the in the in the heart of 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 another young man that was there, in the heart of another young man that was there, his, his son his son in the ministry that it was Titus. Titus. You see, so he said God put it in his heart. He didn't just see something or whatever, but he said there were dealings of God in his heart. So Caleb said, the report that God was according to what was going on in my heart. But I said, nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people to melt. They brought a bad report. You've got to be careful. It's another, uh, I'm going to come out with a teaching on, on, on how to handle fear. Victory over fear. He said they met, they, they, they made the heart of the people to melt. They made the heart of the people because of what they brought. They said they were giants in the land. Now, Caleb also saw the giants, but he, he had another spirit. In other words, he had another perspective. He saw things differently. So you've got to be careful and be mindful of what comes out of your mouth, even in the face of supposed opposition. You've got to be mindful of the fact that greater is he that is in him, in you, in me, than he that is in the world. And and what, what is for us is much more greater than what is against us. And Moses swore on that they saying, surely the land whereof thy feet have trodden shall be thy inheritance. In other words, this is what God said. Now, if you are going to move from promises or prophecies to manifestation of those things, you've got to learn to rehearse these things into the ears of those that need to hear it. You've got to even rehearse it to yourself that God on September 24th, you said this. This is what you said. It has to come to pass. This is what you said. This is it. I am not mistaken. I heard it clearly. I saw it. You gave it to me. You gave me the scriptures. This is what your word says. Um, the name of the man is not coming to me now. That I mean, he said, they said, the, one of God's general, that he will say, God, I hope you are not expecting that we'll go out of here without a revival. I mean, that is faith in action. So he said, Moses swear, verse 9, Joshua 14, verse 9, Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereof thy feet are tread upon, and shall be dying in everything, and your children forever, because thou hast completely followed the Lord your God. Followed my Lord, followed the Lord my God. You have what? Only, only, mark that word. Because look at what the scripture says in the book of James. You've got to understand this. You see what the book, the Bible says in the book of James. He said, he said, he said, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask in faith, 
uh, uh, let him ask in faith, let him ask God. If any of you lack wisdom, James chapter 1 from verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That give it to all men liberally. In other words, he, he, it's, God is liberal. God is bountiful. He gives. He doesn't hurt. He's not stingy. So if you need wisdom, God will give it to you. And upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. He said, but let him ask in faith, not wavering. Now, the scripture tells us in Joshua 14, verse 9, that Caleb only, he said, because thou hast only followed the Lord. In other words, totally, totally, not, there's no wavering. One, he said, his heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. So you've got to make your face like a flint. He said, I've set my face like a flint, and nothing will happen. I mean, you got to be focused and and be direct in it. If your mind shifts away, you go back to it. He said, let him ask in faith, not wavering. Now, that is not even the issue here now. That is not the issue. He said, let him ask in faith, no, for he that wavered is like a wave tossed about the sea, driven the wavy wind and thoughts. It's just like this. It's just like this. He's not sure what he wants. God does not move with such people. If you're not sure of what you want, you've got to make up your mind and go. He said, ask. Matthew 7 to 11. Matthew 7, 7 to 11. He said, ask and it shall be given you. He said, seek and it shall find. He said, knock the door shall be open. For he that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and he that knocketh the door shall be open. So if you are knocking, you've got to know what you are knocking at. If you are asking, you've got to know what you are asking. So he said, let that man, he said, driven with every and tossed with wind and tossed. Verse 7, for let, this is James 1, 7, huh? for let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. Look at verse 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Double-mindedness must come out of our lives. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus. I cast out that spirit of double-mindedness. I pray that the Lord make your heart fixed on him. Fixed on what he has said. That is how to get result. Conviction, believing what God has said with one heart. That is how to do it. That is how to get results. That is how to get results. That is how to do it. That is how to get the results we are talking about. If you are going to move from the promises of God to, to manifestation, into seeing the desires of your heart, into, I mean, uh, a, a pastor would define success as the picture that God has put in your heart or perhaps maybe the prophetic word that you have in your heart and the picture that you have outside, if they are not matching, then 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 you, you are not there yet. So what you want to ensure is that what God has put in your heart is, is, is as, a, as an identical appearance to what you have outside. And if you're going to do that, you've got to come with a fixed start. Your face like a flint. Just facing it and going after what God said. So he said, the world is totally, that's what it means, totally followed the Lord. He totally committed himself to God. That is what it means. Verse 10, Joshua 14, 10, And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. I pray that the Lord keeps you alive. I pray that you will not die untimely. I pray that you will live to see the desires of your heart, the visions, the prophecy that God has placed on your heart. I pray that you will, you will live to see those things coming out. You will live to see the manifestation of those things. Because that, it was Archbishop Dr. Willem that was saying, don't just pray for grace. He said, pray for longevity. Pray to live long. Pray to live long. That's how Jabez cried out. He said, he said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my clothes, and that evil will not slay. Evil, that you keep me from evil. And that's the prayer that we pray in the Lord's Prayer that give us this idea and deliver us from evil. That you will not be cut short at the prime of your days. That you will not just have, it was my mother that said, the richest place is a cemetery because that's where dreams are, are unfulfilled. The pilot that never became a pilot, a preacher that never became a preacher, an evangelist that never became an evangelist, a doctor that never became one. I pray that you will become all that God wants you to be. 
that there will be manifestation. I pray that you will come into believing from doubt. You come to believing. From wavering, you come to strong faith. And Abraham was strong, giving glory to God. Amen. I hope this is blessing you. So let's continue now. Let's continue. He said, verse 10, And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. The Lord will keep you alive. Say to every devil, even if you have diagnosis on your body, I pray for you again, the Lord will keep you alive. That sickness will come out of your body. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will keep you alive. And as he said, this 40 and 5 years. Now this was something that was said to him 45 years ago. See the tenacity in this man. To be able to still have the infantry and the audacity. To believe God for what was told him 45 years. Listen, many of these things will not just come to pass overnight. We've got to stay with it. We've got to stay with it. We've got to persevere. It will not just happen because God said it and then bam, next day you wake up. No! It will take time. But blessed be to God. Jesus Christ the same yesterday. Hebrews 13 verse 8. Today and forever. He does not change. Now, if you do not change, God in heaven does not change. He watches over his words to perform it, so he will bring you to pass in your life. You've got to stay strong. You've got to stay there. You've got to hang in there and keep, keep at it. He said 45 years, these 45 years, even since the Lord spoke the word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I have this day 85. Four score and five years old. He said, I'm 85 now. When this prophecy came, when these prophetic words came, I was 40 years old. Now, I don't know how old you are. I do not know how old you are. But keep believing. Don't stop believing. Keep believing. Don't stop believing. Keep believing. God will come true. God will come true. Are you waiting for the fruit of the womb? It's been 10 years, it's been 15. Keep at it. Keep believing. God will come true. You will not be put to shame. Keep believing. And look at what he said in verse 11. And that's another, another declaration I'm going to make over your life. As yet, as I am as strong this day as I was in the days that Moses sent me as my strength was then, even so is my strength now, for war both to go out and to come. And I pray that God will strengthen you. God will strengthen you to, to, to see the manifestation of what he has said. You will have the strength. I pray for supernatural strength, that your strength will not diminish. I pray that the Lord's strength, the Bible says the glory, the glory of young men, is their strength. The glory of young man, I pray for you young man listening to me, young woman, that nothing attacks your glory. Nothing attacks your strength. Anything assigned to come against your strength, I pray that the God of heaven will come against such in the name of Jesus. The Lord will defeat them. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will abode and abide in strength. In the name of Jesus. So, so what this tells me that if I'm going to see the manifestation of what God has promised, if I'm going to move from prophecies to manifestation, there is a strength that I need. There is a strength that is required. Physical strength, emotional strength, mental strength that is required. If these things are not there, then it becomes difficult for manifestation of the promises. Look at men that have achieved greatness. Look at men that have achieved things that, that we celebrate. The many of these things were done when they had the strength. Many were done when they had the strength. Praise God. I'm going to stop here now and I will come back again next week on the same topic. Next week on the same topic.
to deal with part two. I pray again that God give you strength in the name of Jesus. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have taught us in this broadcast. I pray that the lives of these hearers will be transformed in the name of Jesus. I pray that their lives will be transformed, their lives will never remain the same. That every prophetic word that has been hanging, you will show us what to do to bring it to manifestation. In the name of Jesus, obedience will be grace for obedience will be released. Grace to do the work will be released in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. God bless you. I'm going to come your way again next week. Please like, share, and comment. Because what it does is that, you see, when we say this, then it's not just to get, you know, it is that so that we can reach wider audience, so that we can reach wider. I believe that this is blessing you. So if this is blessing you, what you should do for me, please share it on your platform and share with your friend, with your circles. So that the same word that is transforming your life can transform the lives of the people. Listen, God has said great things concerning us and we believe that this great thing will, be, will come to manifest. The word will become flesh. Until I come your way next week, God bless you. God bless you. Amen.